Hello everybody, you might have noticed a bit of a, a Groundhog Day situation uh, with my videos lately in that I just recently put out this uh, platformer tutorial seemingly twice. You may have gotten two notifications about it, you might not have watched the first one and then been strangely confused as to why the same video seemed to come out again like a couple of weeks later. Um, this is because, uh, and I, I posted about this in a couple of places, I made a bit of a mistake in the, the first video I made. Um, I ended up writing something that caused a, a pretty dangerous bug, um, and uh, I basically had to make the video unlisted like pretty quickly after I released the first version of it. Now, you know, I, I explained a bit about this, but uh, people have been asking, you know, if I would do a video or if I would talk about like what the book was or what the problem was and like how I found it. So this is that video. I figured we'll, we'll go into it a little bit. We'll talk about what happened and, uh, and so on. So originally the code for my new platformer video was using um, this uh, block for its collision. Okay. Um, it was entirely a, a new style for me at least of um, uh, yeah, moving first and then actually adjusting for collisions afterwards. Um, in a way I'd not done before, where we were moving precisely to the bounding box of whatever we collided with, okay? Um, actually came from like some Twitter interactions I had with a guy called Nate, and I even like I credited him in the video and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I, I had never tried this style before, and it seemed really good. Um, honestly, like I, I was really impressed with it. I, I tried it out a whole bunch. Um, and uh, I did like a lot of testing, uh, clearly not quite enough, but I did a lot of testing and it, like, it seemed like re really strong and really hold up quite well. And um, I, I thought it was actually pretty intuitive and I could explain it pretty well. Um, so I ended up doing the video on that. Um, th the method isn't exactly Nate's and we'll get to a bit of that in a bit because it's kind of what, it was. it's my fault basically. It's not that Nate's method is necessarily flawed. Um, it's the, the, the way I approached it um, kind of screwed it up a bit. Um, but basic, we'll get more into that later. Um, the issue though, what happened is, uh, basically we have this while loop here and, uh, it's just gonna like go on while we're colliding with the wall and, um, we, uh, move ourselves to the, the edges of, uh, any wall until like we're no longer colliding with a wall. Okay. So we just like keep pushing ourselves out. Um, and so as long as we repeat that, we'll eventually end up like outside of the wall and on, on the floor or against the wall or whatever. And they're, they're generally speaking, it works pretty well. Um, but there's a bit of an issue. Um, and this is something I should have really seen coming with when you end up precisely, um, it, it, when you put yourself at a very precise position, especially if you have a wall that's in a very precise position with a very precise scaling. Um, like uh, this wall has like a sc Y scale of 1.66, Two five, which is going to end up moving its bounding box at a very, very specific um, like position at top and bottom, right? Now I tried this. I tried this with loads of different like variants and so on, and like never ran into any problems. And the moment I put the video up on YouTube, someone was like, hey, "I'm having this weird issue where I like seem to get stuck in an infinite loop." And uh, yeah, and, and I was like, "Well, I'm just you know, I'm pretty sure this, this all works fine. They must have done something wrong." But I'll go back and just just check to be sure. And I changed the values a bit more, and immediately like ran into this problem. So if uh, <laughs> I, if I just run run the the game as is, the this is the old code. It hits there, and look, we just instantly hit a uh, an infinite loop, just colliding with this. Just like no error or anything like that. The game is just like I have to click this to like get it to like close down. Not good, not what you want for a tutorial video you just point out, put out for that sort of thing to be able to happen. Um, the issue is uh, basically when we uh, collide with a very, very specific like uh, Y position like that, uh, what's going to happen, um, I'll just put this break point here because that actually like helps uh, show the point. When we land here um, and we collide with this is what our Y coordinate gets set to, okay? Like 244.5999999084477, which is too many decimal places. Um, the reason it's too many decimal places is when this loops back around, if I just keep like stepping into function, it just happens again. Like even though like that in theory, like this maths should perfectly put you flush against like the the bounding box of the wall. It shouldn't be a collision point anymore. And 99% of cases it is not. But 
place meeting will do some kind of internal rounding and there's no way to really control this either like if you change the epsilon value that doesn't affect like how place meeting does its rounding or anything like that um like this val like it's it's gonna uh this y coordinate is going to get like slightly rounded in some way like basically is what ha what's happening so it's still finding a collision regardless when you are at this point and then because it's a while loop obviously it's just gonna it's just gonna do what while loop do um and, and carry on over and over and over um now you can actually like fix this um uh, because I mean, I would say the problem is basically being too precise, and we're like too precise uh, the at the wall. So you can actually just like add a tiny amount, like in in uh, the direction away from the wall after you finish the collision, and then that uh, will make it so it, it works just fine. Okay, so like there, there and then it's good. Like, it, <laughs> like it, it, it's pretty solid at, at that point. Um, but I didn't like. I didn't like having to do that and like and, and trying to like sew that into the video as an explanation of like why you need to like do this and be like uh, not perfectly precise and so on. Like it, it 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 felt a bit much for just the video of what I wanted to just be a simple, solid and elegant um, like platformer tutorial. So uh, I just then uh, changed the method um, to the one you now see. Uh, that, that, that's out in the, in the video I put out, which is actually just kind of more of a refinement of my old method. So it's still just doing the uh, like the while loop move closer and closer and closer to the wall, but it does it much more efficiently. So rather than just moving a really t like tiny amount to the wall, and uh, um, it, it, we move like quite a lot, and we just like halve the distance like uh, with every loop. So we're only ever going to have about like ten, like seven to ten loops at like most, like whenever you collide with a wall. Um, which actually makes it really fast compared to like uh, my old method and makes it work with the kind of floating point stuff with the changes to the collision system. Just generally makes it a lot more solid. Um, thanks to Mimpy and people on the Game Maker Discord who helped me out with that one as well. So that, that that's my new tutorial video, but like is... Oh, I want to talk about this idea a bit more because like is this idea just useless? Is it like fundamentally wrong to want to collide uh, like just precisely using like these bounding boxes? And no, not really. It's not useless. Um, it's like I would like I, I feel like there's probably other issues that can happen. Um, so I would like generally avoid ever of being this precise about your collisions not necessarily and you can avoid that in a few ways though like you don't have to put these things at weird positions that scale to like really awkward uh, uh, amounts like this and stretch them but i i'd said in the video that you go oh, yeah you can stretch these do whatever you want and it'll work fine in theory i could have just taken that bit out and said but like no um but like yeah so you can like be controlled about your positions and sort of um make sure you like you know uh, only scale them in integers so your all your collisions happen at whole numbers and so on and so forth that'll help a bit um but also like this isn't actually the way nate's original code worked so like the, his example that he sent me uh worked like he actually did the collision in the collision event so he had like uh, one with o wall a collision event with O wall, and that actually prevents this from happening, um, because I, I use a while loop, right? That just like like continues to go off as long as you're colliding with a wall, and the fact that it still finds a collision is the reason, like we had this infinite loop. He uses the uh, collision event, which is actually quite clever because it is a really short, quick way of only of dealing with like a set of multiple collisions and only those collisions. So even if you collide with two walls, it'll do it'll run this event twice and then be done. It'll move on to the next step. Even if you're still colliding with them or whatever, it doesn't care about that. It's not a while loop, right? Um, and the way to like properly replicate that just in the step event would actually be to do something like um, do like a, a a collision list function here and like like loop through them. But that was going to be too long and awkward for a tutorial. And yeah, I still wanted to do everything in the step event because like I don't like relying on like the collision event and stuff and like, trying to remember the order and stuff in which things happen. And yeah, I feel like you have a bit more control if you just do it all in in in, in the step. And there's a few re and also just simplifying the video a bit as well and keeping it all in one place and that kind of thing. So I was like, oh, maybe I can skirt around that by just doing a while loop. And uh, it was mostly fine because as I say, like you just mostly end up out, in theory, you always end up outside of the collision by the time this is done. Um, but as as we've discovered, not always if you're being this precise. If you're being this precise, sometimes place meeting is going to find a collision in a spot and sometimes it's not. That 
in itself is the reason why I would generally want to lean away from a method like this. Um, uh, unless you're going to do something like this and correct for it and like just move yourself just a tiny amount out so that we like know that there's definitely no collusion wherever you end up, you know? Um, uh, like I said, like just by putting this in in the um, the uh, in the collision event with a wall is a way to do it. Um, it is super legit as well, and and works and totally fixes that issue. Uh, the only other issue with uh, this method is that like sometimes like this can happen as well, uh, where like you put two things over, and and this happens with with Nate's example code as well. Um, there's just sort of a it's a lot to go into in this video. It's getting long enough, but like. It's just a matter of the order in which we do things um, uh, and resolve stuff here. Like you can end up like doing this. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm holding the key towards the wall at the moment. And if you do that with where two walls intersect in this way, um, sometimes you end up just kind of like sitting on it because um, it like it resolves horizontal first and then vertical in a way that like like puts you in like, actually moves you here and then like checks like down and and because like there's a wall here it's like okay there's a floor and then you get all the floor stuff going on as well um but that that's minor because you can kind of like level just level design around that when you know that that limitation exists right you can just like there's not really a <laughs> these these are just collision masks at the end of the day like there's no reason to necessarily have this exact setup right you could just like move this into the wall or, or whatever right you could just you could easily just level design around that as an idea right um so that's that's not a big deal but it is something else to be aware of um so in conclusion i messed up and, and screwed up and the method itself is actually like still viable and still good um but i what i would generally recommend still doing is never actually being like perfectly precise when it comes to platformer collisions, even though that like logically and intuitively you want to be as precise as possible, especially in our new world where we have floating point collisions, um, because you know decimal points only they're going to reach a certain level of precision before stuff starts to get unpredictable, especially when you're working with an engine where you can't necessarily control how everything rounds numbers under the hood. Um, it's kind of a scary thing to do because, like as I say, even Nate's example like still technically does put yourself at these very precise positions uh, positions where these overlaps um, can happen. Um, you just don't see the effects of it because he didn't do a stupid while loop like me. <laughs> but you could potentially see other like weird unpredictable effects that could happen. There are other advantages as well to doing it this way. So like you get this cool way in which you actually get to move first and then like do all your collisions. So in theory, in between here, you can actually do stuff where you actually collide with solid objects. Um, like if you have a solid object that you want to be solid, but also like collide with, you can actually like do stuff in here to trigger an object to do something when you're colliding with it because with my usual thing like you come out you never have a collision because it's preemptive so you never actually get that collision because you're already like out of the walls so you kind of like like weave that stuff into here sometimes it can be kind of messy so there are some cool other advantages to this method um, and because of that what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave the video uh, the original video unlisted and I'm going to link it in the description of this video so you can go and watch it and learn like how this method like works and so on and so forth with the context now of having watched this video and understanding a bit of like its its, its problems or the, the problems with the way I did it at least um, and some of the alternative ways you can do it and fix it up and stuff like that so that it is still out there and still useful um, uh, but I've, I've just kind of put up a gate in front of it with this video <laughs> okay um, and, and, and maybe I'll do some other thing in the future where, I don't know, we, yeah, I can talk about it in a cleaner way now we know what's wrong with it. But, um, but yeah, like I said, still a lot of like totally valid ways to use, uh, use this approach. Um, ultimately though, like whatever works, uh, is, is what works. Um, there's a million and one ways to do platform collision and do not get yourself as tied in as many knots as me trying to work out what like you know the best one is the only reason i'm doing that kind of thing is because i'm making tutorial videos for people and i like i want to be careful about like the things i teach um trying to strike that balance of like what is like teachable and what is like good and so on you don't need to do that you're just making a game and if you're just making a game you just need to put in whatever actually like works for your um particular game um, you can actually just use my original code, like my original just like while loop, but instead of moving one pixel at a time towards the wall, just move 0.1 or 0.01. 
even. Yeah, you'll get like a hundred loops or whatever every time you collide with a wall. It doesn't actually add up to any kind of really performance cost unless you have like literally hundreds of things all running that code at once. Um, like it, it just doesn't, right? Like modern computers, crazy. But um, you definitely do want something more like this sort of method or like something more like the method I show in my, my latest platformer that's um, a bit more of a refined version of that original loop. Um, if you're gonna have like lots and lots of like objects that collide with walls and stuff like that, um, because then these are a lot more performance friendly. In conclusion, uh, platformers are trickier than you think to make. Um... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, don't, don't underestimate the amount of thought that goes into like uh, tr tr trying to plan out like uh, uh, something for a tutorial. Like I, maybe I make it sound like it's simple or whatever. I don't know, but uh, it isn't. You know, like trying to like work out all the ins and outs of this and trying to make sure I don't show you guys something that's just gonna like run you into lots of horrible problems. It's very tricky. Anyway, that's uh, enough of my mistakes on display uh for one day so thank you all for watching i uh, hope this was insightful or useful um and i'll catch you guys next time cheers guys